போய் Filipino missionary based in Hong Kong and works also as co-associate pastor of New Life Fellowship, UPCHK. The content of my channel is mainly the preaching and teaching of the Word of God, and some reviews and reaction of videos from other great preachers of the Apostolic Circle. Some of my contents here in this channel are views and videos of the Holy Land. and Hong Kong and its outlying islands. Welcome to my channel. Enjoy and subscribe. God bless you. Praise God is really a teacher. Praise God. A woman of God. Pastor's wife. Praise God. And uh, very articulate, gifted. Hallelujah. And has a heart, praise God, in the ministry. And uh, If you can distribute Sister Marisa all those materials already there, if you distribute that so that hindi tayo ma, makabana. And I thank the Lord for the availability of the Jimenez family. Praise God. And, and we will figure it out how to connect this uh, sorrow. So, without further delay, I will give this uh, microphone, praise God, to Sister Monica. Take a microphone and pretend to be preaching. 
When I was little, I used to take all my toys and put them on the sofa. And then I would pretend I was the Sunday school teacher. So I would start singing children's songs to them, I would start teaching them uh, a short lesson. So I always enjoyed teaching. And um, Sunday school has been a very, very important part of my upbringing. And um, as I grew up, I, I kind of realized that I enjoy teaching. And not just in Sunday school, but also teaching um, I had two young children from the Philippines coming to Milan and their mom asked me, can you teach them Italian? And, and so I, I started on a Saturday before going to Sunday school, I would teach them a number of Italian. And I realized that I was enjoying it. And so as I grew up, I went on to learn to study languages and then I did my um, degree to, to be a teacher. And that's how we arrived here in Hong Kong. I, I, I am a secondary school teacher, and that's my job. Um, last week, actually, Friday, Saturday, I teach, I teach secondary school. I teach seven grades, okay, from grade 11 to grade, thir to grade 7 to grade 13. And I teach six different courses, okay? And last week, I had three days training from 8.30 to 4.30, three days, on just one course that I teach. So today, in an hour, <laughs> in an hour, we're gonna try and do as much as we can, but can you imagine how much there is to say, amen? Uh, and I want to thank the teachers that um, allowed me to have this opportunity, Pastor Plaza, thank you, and thank you also for giving me the time. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate that. Uh, so let's let's get started. Okay, I will ask you to contribute. So I know it's morning and you got to stay awake. Amen. Amen. All right. So I divided it, all, all these six things that I want us to look at today. I divided it four parts, and we're gonna try to have a two minutes toilet break in between if needed. Okay. So try and stay with me for the whole each session, and then I'll give you two minutes to go to the toilet. Okay, if you need. So the first part, we're going to look at the teacher. So we're going to look at you and, and your ministry and, and why you are here. Okay. The second part, we're going to look at how to prepare for our lesson. And there's a nice, a nice quote that we keep on repeating. If you fail to prepare, you are prepared to fail. And so we always need to, be, to keep in mind that we need to prepare. And we're going to look at how to deliver. Sometimes we look around and we see people. My father and I used to say that there are people fishing during service. Because they do it. And then we're going to look again at our resources. So let's look at the first part. The teacher and the teaching. Why am I here? I will give you one minute. Okay? Think of your favorite teacher ever. Doesn't have to be a Sunday school teacher, but can be like a secular teacher that you had back in the Philippines. Think about the best one you ever had. I would like you to divide yourself in groups, so maybe the people that are around you. Discuss with the people next to you um, how this teacher was. Okay? And in your handout, write three words to describe this teacher. Okay? One minute.
Amen. Okay, some volunteers, some words. What did you think of thinking back to your teachers, your favorite teacher? Uh, Energetic. Okay, what else? Smart. 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 Dedicated. Patient. Passionate. Loving, Love knowledgeable, what else? Empowering. Empower, energetic, yes? Okay, let's have a look at some answers. Okay. Creative. Oh, sorry? Creative. Creative. Oh. Creative. 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 It was not just come in the lesson I teach you go away. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. She prayed for us. If it was a Sunday school teacher or a youth teacher or a Bible school teacher, he was passionate about his subject. Have you ever realized, have you ever noticed the difference between a teacher that goes and like, all right, here's the lesson, let's read, okay, page one, blah, 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 do the lesson, blah. And a teacher that really likes the subject and he talks about it like if it's a nice story and you really enjoy listening to them. Yeah? Have you ever noticed the difference between that? The one is making you fall asleep and the other one is, I want to study about that, I want to know as much as he does, isn't it? She made time for me. Hmm? Oh, let, let's talk, let's have a coffee after the lesson. Tell me more about how you're, what you're going through. Um, 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 oh, my teacher called me during the week just to check how, the, oh, how my exam or how my work is doing. He explained so well. He knew what he was talking about. She cared for me. He was funny. He was not boring. He always made us laugh. Very he always good. answered all the questions, right? Is that right? Very good. Right. Teaching is to transmit information, right? When we when we teach, we give we, we're passing knowledge. Hmm? Yeah. There is content that we have to cover in our lessons. Okay? We have a program, we have a handout that with all the lessons that we need to teach, right? Bible school students, you had course A and you have to do and know everything in course A, then it was course B and know everything in course B. When you were in school, you had all the subjects and you had to pass the exam for all the subjects and you had assessments. But when it comes to teaching the Word of God, we just don't transmit knowledge. We also want to transform their hearts. And it's not our ability to transform people's hearts. Amen? We are just a tool. We are just a channel. Okay? We, yes, we want our students to know and to have knowledge, to gain knowledge. But we want to see a spiritual growth. We want that after our lessons or after our cycle of lessons, conviction will start um, working in their life. Amen? And ultimately this will bring to a change and a, a spiritual growth. Amen? And so in order to facilitate or to point others towards Christ or to live in this relationship with Christ, we first must be in connection with Him. Amen? So we can't we can't turn a switch on Sunday and say, I'm a good person today. Today I'm a good Christian. And then Monday I turn it off. Amen? Yeah, my students are not here, they don't see me. I can do whatever I want. I have, I, where I leave, because I, I'm always late, so I have to leave next to my school. <laughs> Sister Anna really knows. <laughs> and uh, where I leave, there are a lot of students, right? And sometimes I go out and I see them and I say hello. But then talking to other colleagues, they say, oh, I don't want to leave next to my students, but then I can see me on Saturday night. And I'm like, oh, I don't mind if they see me. I don't, you know. Yeah, I can see them. I'm happy to see them. So some, some of us are like this. Oh, Monday, I don't, see, I don't want my students to see me. You know, I'm going to be far away so no one can see me and I think people can't see what I'm doing. This is not how a teacher is, and not, that's not how it works, right? We can't put the Sunday school or the Bible school teacher coat on Sunday, and look really good, and then after the lesson take it off and just walk off doing our things, okay? So, 
First of all, we need to teach ourselves. We need God to begin this work of transformation that we expect in our students. We need Him to start with us so that we can be His hands and His feet. That's what we are. We are the tools. We are each other. Amen? Amen. Paul says that God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And we see this in 2 Corinthians 5, 18-20. And all these things are God who has reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen? Amen. So as teachers, we are a channel. Okay? We are helping students to grow and come closer to God. Amen? Amen. Um, and then it carries on saying, now we are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. 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 So when you are teaching, you are His ambassador. Okay? You are bringing His forth His word. You are teaching. Amen? Therefore, what should we do? We must lead by example. Amen? What coat am I wearing during the week? What jacket am I wearing during the week? What jacket am I wearing on Sunday? Is it the same one? Or is two or three, four different ones depending on which um, situation I am? Hmm? My faith? My belief, my doctrine must be so integral to my identity that it shapes every part of my life. Not just when I'm teaching. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's not just a, a jacket that I put on. It has to be your DNA. Amen. 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 What we are, what we, what you are, okay, teaches your students more than what you say. In fact, when you, tell, when you told me about your favorite teacher, you didn't tell me what they teach you. You told me what they wear. Your students in 10, 15, 20 years time, they may forget everything you taught them. Sorry, Brother Chris. But they will remember how you were in the classroom and what you did to them outside the classroom. Amen? Hopefully they will remember something. Amen? Lots of people say, do as I say and not as I do. But that cannot work. We must be leading by example. Amen? Amen. In 2 Timothy 3, 5, Paul warned Timothy of false prophets and their followers, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Apostolic teachers, let's not just have a form of godliness. Amen? Let's not just have an outlook of godliness, but seek the power of the Holy Ghost. When our faith is who we are, is in our DNA, is embedded in every area of our life, then it's who we are that can make the difference in our students. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Still awake? Yeah. Amen. Okay. So, what qualities do we need to have as Pentecostal teachers? Hmm? And not be dragged with wine, we're in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit is not just one of thing, but continuously. Amen? And be filled and continue to be full. Don't allow life, things to make you empty. Hmm? Always be full of the Spirit. Because your students are following your steps. Paul said, be ye followers of me as I am also of Christ. Amen? So, teach. Your teaching is based on what you already have experienced. If you have experienced the Holy Ghost, if you are continuously full of the Holy Ghost, if you are living a life in faith, then you can transmit that to your students. You can't teach something you don't have. Amen? So you are teaching from the overflow. Okay? You don't go every week scraping for something to teach to your students. Alright? But you are so full of testimonies, you are so full of stories, so full of experiences for living for God that you can transmit this to your students. It just comes out with overflow. Amen? Don't simply teach from your handbook and say, okay, page 5 is saying this, let's read all together. Amen? You cannot take your students where you haven't been yourself. Amen. Amen. So Amen. teachers must commit it to an ongoing spiritual... And that's why we're here. Amen. You wouldn't be here if you wouldn't want to 
grow and progress. Amen? Amen. It can happen and it should happen though. And there's also the saying that the students surpass the master. Have you ever heard of that? And sometimes teachers are scared of that. They don't want their students to become better than them. But we should not be afraid. Because your students, yes, are following your steps and they should become, follow what you do or your example. But they are not meant to become you. Your job as a teacher is for them to become what God wants them to be. Amen? And if God wants them to become missionaries, so be it. If God wants them to become future pastors, so be it. If you in 20 years will still be here teaching, will you be training them? Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. So I remember my Sunday school teacher, she used to take us all of our, all, all our students and tell us, Among you there is a future pastor. Among you there is a future evangelist. Among you there is a future youth leader. And it did happen. And she's still there teaching. But every time I go back, I thank her. And I say, you made a difference in my life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, teachers find their burden when God's love for people consumes them. Why are you teaching? Is that out of a job? Is it out of, I have to do it? Is it just to say, I am a teacher? I'm so good. I have a position in the church. Students are transformed when they encounter that love. We are the tools, we are the channel for them to experience that love in the classroom. Why are we teaching? What is our purpose? And what is our burden? Hebrews 6 10 says that he is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Amen? Amen. Our labor, our teaching, our ministry, our serving our students is not out of a job title, is not our uh, out for out of glory, but it's for love. Amen. Yeah. Jesus came yeah. and, and died for us on the cross and raised again on the third day and poured out his Holy Spirit for love. Yes. Yeah. And that same love that God has for souls is to be the same love that drives us as teachers to teach our students. Oh, yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. And sometimes we think, oh, I'm not qualified, I'm not good enough, I don't have the time. How can I be teaching, how can I be preparing when I have so many things to do during the week? But be confident because God has chosen you. And as, as I was preparing this, this slide, a song came to my mind, and I don't know if there is in English. I, I know it because we used to sing it in Italy. It says, among millions and millions in the world, he has chosen me. He has chosen me. And I will serve him. Hallelujah. He could have chosen anyone. He's God. He's omnipotent. He's magnificent. There's nothing I cannot do. He could have chosen anyone to be the teacher. Yet you are here teaching Sunday in and Sunday out. He chose you for a reason. So he knows that you can do it. He knows that you have a word that you can bring forth. Amen. Hallelujah. So everything has to be out of love, right? And and to transmit this love, we need to have a relationship with our students, right? So how can we form a relationship with our students? One is be interested in them. Do you know their names? Do you know what they do outside your lesson? Do you know how long they've been in church? Do you know what they like to do? Do you know what, what their family is at home? Amen? What do you know about them? Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Do you share this with your student? Wherefore comfort yourself together and identify one another even as also ye do. Do you do that with your students? Bear ye one another's burdens. And sometimes the teacher has to help or show the student how to do that. Amen? And so fulfill the law of Christ. Finally, be your own in one mind. Having compassion. We are teachers, we're not judging. Judges. 
Sorry. Okay. Having compassion on one another, love us, brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Woodward advises, I will say to my editors on behalf of younger men, why? Doesn't always indicate rebellion. Amen. Sometimes young people are always like, why? Why do I have to do this? Why do we have to do things like that? Why are we doing this? Why are we making this day? Why are we not doing something else? Right? That doesn't mean that they're rebellious. They just need to know why. And I would say to younger men on behalf of my elders, just because they didn't explain why, doesn't mean that they were wrong about the what. Right? So young people, we can't just assume that because they, they told you you have to do that. We can't assume that I was wrong. Right? So sometimes we need to know also their generation. And okay? we need to know what what their what they like, what they dislike, what their culture is. Okay? There's a little bit of, of, of learning that we need to do ourselves as teachers. Okay? And the last thing is prioritize connections over popularity. Okay? Watch out what types of jokes you make in your classroom. Sometimes you just want to be funny and, and be appealing to our students, but sometimes we may end up just offending someone. Yeah. Especially if we have a new students and we don't know their background. Hmm? And then you start making jokes about other cultures, about other religions, about uh, dialects, I don't know. Some students that maybe are new, they may get offended. If we joke about other people, they someone may get offended. So as teacher, let's make sure that we are teaching the word of God. If I have to make a joke, I can maybe tell a kind of funny story about myself that happened to me, and I joke about myself, but I don't know about other people. Amen. And finally, what a normal it is to teach the Word of God. The Word of God contains the powerful, unchanging, life-giving story of God for all humanity. For all time. 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 5,000 years from now. And you have been chosen for the honor of speaking that Word, illustrating this Word, discussing the Word, teaching it, and living a real life study of that word. Amen? Yeah. It's not a small job, because you are teaching the word of God. And the Bible is God's word to us. It's holy, it's perfect, unchanged, unchanging. Yeah. All of our teaching strategies, everything we do here, all your preparation, all your ideas, everything is useless if we don't believe in conviction and teach from it and about it with soul gripping passion. Amen. There has to be love, there has to be passion, there has to be a calling in what we do. Amen. We cannot teach passionately until we love it deeply ourselves. We need to love the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we are not teaching from the handbook of my, in my father's house. We are teaching from the Word of God. Amen. My father's house is a guide, so you don't have to plan the whole lesson on your own. But you're teaching the Word of God, and you have to love the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God. Okay, yes. it, Psalm says to meditate, the day, they just will meditate day and, and night. night. Day and night. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And so, I'll stop here for the first session. If you need to go to the toilet, you can go now, but if you have a question, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If not, I'll move on in uh, one minute and a half to the next session. Amen? Amen. The pandemic is one. I 
so you need to read it, you have to make notes, maybe you have something that you can add, yes. maybe you don't understand what the Bible verse means, so you want to research, but the students, you, I'm sure you can add so much more definitions and meanings of each word, okay? So, Psalms 1, 2 says, But in his, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day, day and night. And the first Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Amen? So, these are the two things. We need to meditate day and night, and our purpose is to give glory to God. Amen? Now, I know that we that, that, that live very busy life, and sometimes we can't uh, say, Oh, to our employer, sorry, I need to take two hours to study the Word of God. Can't do that. Right? Um, I prepared part of this presentation at work and I had my boss in front of me and he was like, oh, you're planning your lesson. I'm like, yeah, I'm planning a lesson. <laughs> Not the one you're thinking, but I'm planning a lesson. Um, and so we, maybe we don't have the actual time to be studying and writing and making notes, but we have a brain and we can meditate. Amen? Yeah. So this is something I used to do when I used to teach Sunday school before. Uh, I used to, on Sunday, I used to start reading what was the lesson for the next one. Look at the topic, look at what the manual was telling me to do. And then during the week I would always read the key verse. Alright? Always read the key verse. And then start thinking, how can I develop it? How can, how can so and so would like me to teach him this verse? How this child would like me to teach this verse? And I would just think about it. And then when the weekend would come, I would have actual time to sit down and prepare and write things. But I already had meditated on it for the whole five days. Amen? So, yes, while I'm, I was doing something else, I was still thinking. Because that's my ministry. That's my priority. That's what God called me to do. So it comes to me in my mind. I am serving these children. I am serving these people, my students, on the weekend. I can't leave them the last five minutes of my day because I'm tired and I don't have any more energy to think about it. Correct. Amen? Amen. God told me to serve them. Yeah. And so to serve them, I have to give them my best. Well, my best during that day is my brain. So I'm just going to think about it and meditate about the word and meditate about how can te how I can teach them. Amen? Amen? So there has to be preparation. Because if we prepare, fail to prepare, we are prepared to fail. Amen. Amen. And you don't want to fail these students because one day God will ask you, what did you do with these people that I gave you in charge? Amen. And you cannot tell them always to hire to prepare a good lesson. Amen? Amen. It's called discipleship class. You are making disciples. Amen. And I don't think Jesus would give the last five minutes of his days to his disciples. He was teaching them. He was encouraging them. He told them off at times. He was showing them how to live for God. Amen? Amen? And so we need to plan so that we can facilitate the move of the Spirit in our lesson. Who knows? God can bring the Spirit in a discipleship lesson. Why not? If you look, go in your booklet at page 3, session 2, preparation. If you fail to prepare, you are prepared to fail. Amen? Amen. A spirit-led life is a hallmark of who we are as apostolics. One of our defining birthmarks is our utter dependence on the Holy Ghost. A spirit-led life is a hallmark of who we are as apostolics. One of our defining birthmark is our utter dependence on the Holy Ghost. Okay? Sometimes we tend to think critically of planning and preparation. Perhaps out of the fear we would shackle the move of the spirit. Planning and preparation. When we used to live in the UK, it happened to me. I played the piano for maybe a 
ladies service in the district and the worship leader would tell us we we'll just follow the lead of the spirit <laughs> and I was learning to play the piano and I was like the spirit is not going to give me a paper with all the notes I need to know which song you're going to sing <laughs> so it's good we have to follow the lead of the spirit yeah. but we need to be prepared yeah. first of all is that really our motive? So we don't want to shock the Holy the Spirit? Or have we just avoided the hard work and deep thought involved in it intentionally? I'm not going to do that anyway. God is going to show up and do something. I'm not going to prepare because God, God will do it. No, you are His hands and feet. He called you. You are the tool. You are the channel. You have to do something. Yes. Granted, there is a danger of going overboard and over-programming ministry. So that's also the other danger, right? However, there's also the danger of not giving God our best when we merely show up with no plan except to hope God some, does something. The diligent apostolic teacher and leader must strike an equilibrium between, plan, between planning and following the lead of the Spirit. So one is a commitment that the move of the Spirit supersedes our human effort. I can plan, but if God wants to do something else, so be it. Number two, preparing a plan. You have to plan your lesson. Think about Nehemiah and his team of war builders. We can plan with one hand, We can plan with one hand and seek the leading of the Spirit with the other. Plan with one hand and seek the leading of the Spirit with the other. When we recognize our role as a coach to connect students to Jesus, then we naturally want to encourage students to come to class. Not for any self-serving reasons or not for our own glory, but so students can have a life-transforming encounter with Jesus. Amen? When we recognize our role as a coach to connect students to Jesus, we naturally want to encourage students to come to class, not for any self-serving reasons, but so students can have a life transforming encounter with Jesus. Amen? Amen. And I really like this passage that I put here. We have to prepare. Not because we're going to follow exactly every step of everything we plan. We may one day say, oh, this plan goes out of the window because God wants to do something else. So it means that we need to prepare. You can reuse the plan another time. Okay, it doesn't mean that you have to throw it away. But you need to plan. But you need to be so prepared spiritually. Yes. Pray for your students. Yes. That you know when it's time to say, today, you know what, we're not going to follow this plan. I think God wants to tell you something else. Amen? Hallelujah. So we need to facilitate the move of the Spirit. We are the channels. Amen? And so, we're going to look at how to start a lesson. The starter of the lesson. Look at your experience as a teacher. Maybe talk about it with a person next to you. Write in your handout, where you have space, how a lesson should be structured. Uh, I greet the students, uh, make them sit down, I introduce the lesson, I talk, Maybe ask some questions, I don't know. And then this is the break, this is the class. I don't know. You, you tell me. Alright? And then I give you enough time to, to talk with, with a person next to you, discuss it with your group. Okay?
you welcome them and they can sing, you pray. At what point do you introduce the new lesson? Do you ask questions about their own lesson? Do you, do you ask questions? Do you let them ask you questions? If they have a question, what do you do?
when you do the lesson, you need a, with the scripture and then the lesson and the discussion and then application and then summary. You ask the questions or the students ask the questions? It's a Q&A. And then? Uh, close prayer and close prayer, prayer. prayer. Okay. Yes. So when you are preparing for this lesson, right? Where do you start? No, no, wait. Oh, yes. When you are actually writing, the night before, and finally have time to write down what you are going to teach. Where do you start? Or even better, during the week. What are you thinking of? You think about the Bible first, and then what else? Yeah, okay, so you put input and what's your input? So you have the Bible first and then Yes, excellent. We start with the objective. Because sometimes we take a Bible first and it can be so many things. Right? And in our study, instead of talking about A, we go with A and then we end up with Z. Right? So, what we need to keep in mind is the objective. Alright? When I plan a class, I start with A, an activity on the topic I want to teach. Oh, this, for this lesson, it's really good to do this, this activity. I saw once, I need to do this. B, an activity on the last class topic, so I know what the students have done. Or C, the objective. So, where am I taking my students today? Where do I start? A, B, or C? Put your hands up if it's A. B, C. Hands up if you think the correct answer is C. Right. Let's try again. Let's put your hands up if it's A. Anyone think A is the correct answer? A. Hands up. Don't be shy. Everyone, close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes. Close your eyes. So no one will know. Right, if you think it's A, put your hand up. A. Right, hands down. Eyes closed. When I plan the class, I start with an activity on the last class topic. If you think it's correct, hands up. Right, this is not when you are teaching, when you are planning. C. When I plan the class, I start with the objective. Where am I taking my students today? Hands up if you think this one is correct. All right, moment of truth. Drum rolls. The correct answer is C. Right? So when you're planning, the objective has to be in your mind. And the verse. So where am I taking them to Sunday? We're gonna have a one hour journey in our discipleship course. Where are we starting? Where are we going? I have to keep the objective in mind. This way I will not go out of topic. Amen? So, how do I plan it? So I know the objective. I know I have to reach that destination. How am I going to do it? Right? So, a of layout or just have a look how we can structure our lesson. Hmm? Quick start. Check what students remember, make sure they have the basis to learn the new topic. If they don't if they don't know anything about the new birth, I can't tell them about um, living in holiness. Right? Correct. Yeah, does that make sense? So they need to have the basis. Yeah, yeah the basics. If they don't know about creation, I I cannot talk to them about uh, the fall of man, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah? Uh, don't take too long and capture their attention. Um, it, have you ever gone go on social media, right? You scroll. Oh, interesting. Let me click on it, right? You have to be the interesting post they want to click on. 
Do you know what I mean? So their mind is going, right? And then you're like, today we're going to do this. And you're like, whoa, let me click on it. I'm going to be engaged. I'm going to listen to what you have to tell me, right? Yeah, does it make sense? So we have to get their attention. Let's not speak for an hour. It's not good for our voices. Okay? So involve your students. As you go ahead, ask them questions. Has it ever happened to you that? Can you, make, can you make it relatable to them? Ask questions. Encourage them to take an active role in the class. Uh, make them write something. Make them look for verse. Make them say something from their own point of view or from their own experience. Amen? Remind them the objective throughout the class. Remember, today we are learning how to plan a lesson, right? Remember, today one of our objectives is how to prepare and how to plan our lesson. That's what we are doing now. Amen? Throughout the lesson, we want to check that they are with us, right? If not, we speak for the whole lesson and then like, alright guys, so what did you understand? Don't remember, right? They have to be with you as you as you teach them. Ask questions to help your students think, reflect, meditate on the word. Okay? Uh, I know sometimes Brother Chris has been asking really strange questions to his students. Right? That's really for, for the students to think. To leave the classroom and still chew on the word of God. Because that's your that's your job. And we're gonna look after the difference between teaching and preaching. Okay, your job is for them to chew on the word, think and meditate on it. Ask questions to check what they're understanding. Are they with you? Yeah. Are they there physically but mentally they are? <laughs> Millions of kilometers apart. Okay? Allow them to ask questions. Don't be scared and you look at it in our preparation. We should not be scared of teach the students asking us questions. Alright? If you if you if you feel not if you don't feel comfortable answering questions straight away because maybe you want to go home and study the questions first, tell them, write your questions on a post-it. I will collect them and at the beginning of next lesson we will we will answer all these questions. Then, um, you can ask them to do something and then swap in between each other so they can check their answer, okay? So you can do different ways. So you can ask them to put their hands up and down or stand up or stand up, just for them to move a little bit. Otherwise, they sit there and go, <laughs> right? Especially if the chairs are comfortable and your voice is the same the time, so it makes it so easy to kind of sleep because you're moving from page 10 and this is what the Bible says. Right? And then at the end, has everyone arrived to the objective? Have we all traveled together? Have we all arrived safe and sound to our heart or on the lesson? Amen? If not, has anyone, everyone learned something? Because we are all a different big part in our walk with God, right? Yes. So maybe that some people will arrive to a certain destination and other people will, learn, will take it differently. And everyone works and walks and grows at different times and we need to understand, understand that. Does this have to be followed every time? No. Because we plan, but we follow the lead of the Spirit. Amen? So do not be afraid to go out of your plan. Right? Follow the lead of the Spirit. Make sure your students' needs are met. Remember, we are doing a labor of love. Amen? Amen. And, I, and I tell you from experience, when I was training to become a teacher, I had my plan. And I'll just go through my plan and go less. And then if I would ask a question to your students and they didn't know, I'm like, what's going on now? And then my mentor told me, well, don't worry. Stop the lesson, explain everything that needs to be explained, and if you have time, you continue. If not, just say, we continue with this next lesson. Right? So we can't expect students to arrive to a destination if they have gaps in their knowledge. Right? 
So if there is something that they don't know, if there is something that I'm not saying in this case, I'm not saying something out of topic, right? But if they can't understand holiness clearly because they don't know about the plan of salvation, I'm making a really basic example so we can all understand, right? I need to stop the lesson and go back to explain the plan of salvation. You understand what I mean? Yeah? So don't be scared to say, okay, I'm going to stop. Let's all go back. Let's make sure we are all on the same boat. And then we move on again. Amen? So sometimes the lesson will not go according to plan, but that doesn't mean that the lesson has failed. Because everyone now is on the same boat and is traveling together. Amen? Amen? Right. So we need to have the objective in our mind. Otherwise, you are driving a boat, but you don't know where you're taking your students. Right? So make sure that when you meditate and you plan, you have, yes, the Bible verse, but you also know what the objective of the lesson is. Sometimes the manuals tell you, objective of the lesson, to teach, da, 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 da. and that makes it really easy, because then you already have it done. Some other times, you will have to read the lesson and say, where am I going with this lesson? Amen? So sometimes it's our job to decide what the objective is. And so how the objective must be, please put your hands up this time for the answer you think is correct. The objective must be short and simple. B, the objective must be long and very detailed. C, the objective must be rich every class. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. I see people with eyes closed. Close your eyes. I need a preacher to come here and tell everyone to close their eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. Right. A. If you think the objective must be short and simple, put your hand up. Good. B. If you think the objective must be long and very detailed, put your hand up. C. Put your hand up if you think the objective must be reached every class. C. Right. Drum rolls. The right answer is short and simple. And about four people got it right. Okay. So, has to be short and simple. It's something that they can remember. Right? I put, I put six bullet points, but they were all very short. Because we have four different sessions, right? You're going to learn to plan a lesson, learn how to prepare. It's not detailed, right? Um, and see, reach every class. Not always you will reach your, your objective. Because sometimes they, they are on different boats. And so you need to stop and recap. Or the, the spirit is leading you towards a different aspect, angle, or uh, subject, alright? So it may not always be seen, alright? But you always have to be short and simple to remember, right? So have a look here. You got A, this two, two, two objectives. A, to be able to explain the oneness of God using at least 10 verses. Or, to learn that God is one, to accept it in your life, and then to share with a friend using at least 10 verses. Imagine you're working during the week like, oh, I don't know, I'm not checking, 
I have a man where I have to go back to my room and check. Right? Oh, I have a voice tape on my WhatsApp with a long five minutes WhatsApp voice message with the objective. Let me listen to it again. It has to be short. Short and simple. Easy to remember. It's like... Boom. Objective. It's the smallest dog. Short and simple. Amen? Which one? To know the judges of Israel, for example, they were subsequently renewed and explain their role in the book of Judges and their influence in the Old Testament, for example, in Judges 10 24. Or, to know the judges of Israel and explain their role during the book. Okay? I'm gonna put the timer. 
You have seven minutes to work with someone. Don't work on your own. It's nicer to work in groups. Create a storyboard and you have it in your in your handout. You see the six boxes? You have something like this? Yeah? Yeah? So create a storyboard. Each square will represent a step in your class. So don't do welcome, prayer, teaching. No, no, no. The first one will be greetings and prayer, like the first part. Yeah? So every box is an episode in your class. Imagine you get one hour, you have six episodes, okay? So they don't have to be all the same. One can be three minutes, one can be ten minutes, one can be fifteen minutes, one can be five minutes. As long as overall is sixteen minutes, okay? But you have seven minutes to um, create a storyboard of how you're going to teach your lesson on understanding the plan of salvation. Okay? I, the, the handout is giving you the objective. Alright? So what are you going to do? Don't work on your own. Find someone to work with if you are sitting on your own. Amen? <laughs>
Do not leave your students behind. Get all in the same boat. If it's needed, stop the lesson, regroup, get everyone together, and then move on. And the last one, teamwork makes the dream work. I told you not to plan your lesson on your own. It's nice time to work with someone else. Talk to the other teachers. How are they teaching? Are they trying something different? How did the lesson go? Amen? Work together. As a teacher, you are the expert. But to become the expert, you must be prepared to give answers based on the word. Not on your own personal convictions. Amen? We are, we are not the pastors. We are the teachers. Amen? So we, our teaching has to be based on the word. If I give an information, I have to back it up with a Bible verse. Amen? Leave the conviction to the pastor. Amen? Amen. Teamwork. We are not supermen. God gave you this job. God called you to this ministry. But He called other people too. We are the body of Christ. We are not the hand of Christ. We are the body of Christ. So we need to learn to work together. Share what we've been, what we're doing. Work together with other teachers. And also, use social media wisely. Face, I, I, like, I love to follow Facebook, Instagram pages for teaching ideas. Alright? The internet is full of things. YouTube is full of ideas. However, be careful where you're taking them from. Don't go to the first Trinitarian church you find and get there all the ideas you find. Because you may find a wrong lesson. And then teach without knowing what you're teaching. Amen. Right? But use it, use it wisely. There's plenty of ideas that you can find. Okay? And sometimes I, I, I you know, like scroll. And I'm like, oh, this is a good page. This, this is good things that, we can, that I can use in my lessons. I'm not saying that I download the full lesson. But activities. Ideas. Alright? But, but I, I said before that we're always growing, right? So we are growing spiritually, but we have to grow in the way we teach. If in 10 years' time we cannot be teaching the same way we are teaching now. Amen? Alright. I'm going to take questions at the end, and if you need to go to toilet, you can, but I will move on because we don't have time. So, as I said, we are teachers. We are not preachers. Okay? And I want you to look at the difference because sometimes we think that preaching is shouting and teaching is speaking normally. Right? So now I'm teaching and now I'm preaching! Right? But that's not the case. That's not the difference. If you look in the New Testament, we have a word for preaching. We find it in 1 Timothy 1 7, we find it in 2 Timothy 1 11, we find it in 2 Peter 2 5. And it's the word keros. Okay? In the ancient world, was simply a herald. A guy who rode into the town to give a news. That's what the preacher does. Comes and gives you the news. Adidas Kalos, which is a word that is used very often to talk about Jesus, the master, hmm? was an instructor, someone uh, who explained or taught something to someone else. There is a difference. One just comes and proclaims what they need to be proclaimed. The other sits down. Personal connection because it teaches to someone. Right? Okay? And um, instruct, explain. Preaching is proclaiming, heralding, announcing news to the people. The gospel, especially but not exclusively, to those who haven't heard it before. Whereas teaching is explaining things about the gospel that people don't understand and instructing them on how to live in light of it. Okay? Yes, there's always a teaching component in our preaching because, yeah? But as a teacher, we are explaining the word. Amen? In other words, the difference between preaching and teaching is not shouting, whispering, or illuminating versus Okay? It's the difference between heralding, proclaiming, and explaining. Amen? Okay. Right. So, as we are teaching, we know that we are teaching, not preaching in our discipleship class. How is your class doing as you start, okay, with picture number one, number two, 
let's see how they are reacting. We have different types of students. We have the student that is engaged, okay? He likes what you're doing, he's with you, he's answering, he's asking questions. Then we have the strategic compliance teacher. He's, he wants to finish the discipleship course, so he's there, because he has to do it, because he has to finish the lesson. Then you got the regional compliance. So I don't want to be told off by my group unit or the unit leader. I don't want to be told off by my pastor, so I'm just going to sit here and stay here for the whole lesson. Then you have the retreat student, the one that is there, but he's there, but his mind is somewhere else. Yes. <laughs> so Monica, are you there? Can you answer the question? Oh, yes, sorry. Four. What are we doing again? This is what I get in my school, when my students are there. What do we have to do? Oh, they like. And then the last one is rebellion, but I hope there's no rebellious students among us. Amen? So, we want to have an engaged student, right? So, how do I do that? As teachers, we need to read what's going on around us. We cannot just stay there and say, let's go to Matthew 5, 3, and so on. Okay? Okay. No. We need to learn and read what's happening around us. What's happening in my students' brain? Are they okay? Yes, I'm with it. I'm engaged. Or I'm like, fishing the third fish already. Okay, what is happening in their brains? Because we look at the knowledge. What is happening in their hearts? Because I am a channel and I'm being the hands and feet of God and you know, talking about the word of God that is life changing. Amen? It's all powerful. So I'm not just talking about in my father's house, I'm talking about the word of God here. What is happening in their heart? It won't be possible if we as teachers are too focused reading our plan, reading our lesson. If I don't look at you and if I just teach like this, because I haven't prepared and I have to read everything and I don't know where I'm going next, then I have no clue of what you guys are doing. Amen? So as I teach, I need to be looking at my students. I need to see what's happening. Amen? Or you may make a point in your lesson and someone reacts in a certain way and maybe you think, the lesson I need to talk to the sister because there may be something going on and I want to find out because I'm a caring teacher, right? And I want to, to take care of her and mentor her and decide and disciple her. Yeah. Amen? So, how can I do that? Give options. How do they prefer to learn? Sometimes it's not like thing to ask, what, what, what do you like to do to learn? You like, you like to learn books? To read books? Maybe I can give you some books that you can read. You like to uh, do active things that maybe I need to. Think about an active um, activity that we can do in our discipleship class. Don't always do the same thing because every student in your class is different. They all have different needs, so you have to do different things. And surprise them. Don't make them feel like they are stuck on the chair. Make them do things. Make them talk to the person next to them. Make them, make them ask questions. Make them do things. Amen? Make them think. Use your testimony. Your testimony is powerful. Yeah. And it may seem like a short story or maybe a non-church related story, but it can impact someone and it can help them think. Use examples. Okay? Uh, use quotes. Okay? Check what your students already know. How can you build on their knowledge? Amen? 
Is there any correction that's needed to be done because they know something that is not accurate? Right? We can't give that for granted. We need to check what they know. And also make them feel safe. You are not the judge. You are the teacher. God is the judge. Don't make them feel bad if they make a mistake. Yeah. Don't judge your students. Yeah. You are there to help them grow. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And be their mentor in the classroom and outside the classroom. And the ultimate goal of this job is to make disciples. God gave some, Pastor Plaza read this verse before, God gave some apostles, as prophets, as evangelists, as pastors and teachers, for the keeping, a keeping of the saints for the work of service and to the building up of the body of Christ. You must build up and not tear down. Amen? So as a teacher, you are keeping them and building them up. Amen? And look at how the environment in your classroom is. Is everyone involved? Or are they there in body and away in mind? What attitude are you reflecting? Hmm? You reflect the attitude and the behavior, behavior towards the learning. If you don't want to be there, well, why, would you, why would your students be there? Right? If you don't want to be teaching the class, why would your students want to listen to you? Right? If you're not passionate about the Word of God, why would your student be passionate about the Word of God? Amen. Amen? We have to love what I'm teaching. Yeah. And so as students, I can see, as teachers, sorry, as teachers, there's a lot of things going on, yes? yes? On top of work. There is a spiritual preparation, study and plan, short and simple, short and simple, short and simple. There is a delivery, they have to be engaged, they have to be engaged, they have to be engaged. I have to keep track of what they're doing in the classroom, out of the classroom, because I'm mentoring them. I need to think of different methods so that everyone can learn uh, the best way they can. And I also have to give spiritual guidance. And there's so many things to consider. Again, teaching is a ministry. God didn't want it to be teachers just so you can say, I am a teacher. Right? right? Yeah. You are serving your students. Yeah. And all these things is for you to serve them the best we can. Yeah. Alright? Actions speak louder than more. Have you ever heard that? Yeah. 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 So the way we behave, the way we do, the way we are is going to speak louder than all the lessons we teach. Yeah. Amen? But there's something even better. Consistency speaks louder than both. Oh, yeah. If I do think, what well, if I have a, an amazing lesson one Sunday, because I just had my, my teaching uh, lecture, and it's going to be great lesson, short and simple, everyone engaged, yay! And then I'm like, oh, that was too much, I'm not doing that anymore. And then, Phew. That was going to say, amen? But if I'm consistent in my serving towards the Lord, Amen? If I'm consistent in serving the Lord with the ministry He has given me. Amen? If I'm consistent in, in my learning and meditating the Word of God day in and night out. Amen? If I continue doing and I'm consistent and I live a life of faith and my students are going to see that, wow, that my teacher is always on it, is always passionate. There's, there's so many stories that she can tell you because she lives so passionately for the Lord. What's going to tell to your students our consistency, amen? Hallelujah. And to conclude, resources. Think, how many times have you taught your course or your discipleship classes or your Bible study? How many times have you been teaching it? Do you teach it on your own or with someone else? Where do you put your resources? Once you've done a lesson, where do you put it? Do you have a folder where you put all the materials you use? Or do you have to start all over again every time because you put them little pieces and then they throw away and like, what do I do again? And as I said, social media is not always bad, but I need to know where I'm looking. Alright? Know where to look or who to ask. But most thing is you are a body. We are the body of Christ. If I don't know how to 
go on with my teaching or I'm, I'm struggling a bit because my students are fishing. What can I do? Don't be, don't be shy. Ask someone. Amen. Ask another fellow teacher. Okay? Do not rely on resources from other denominations. Do not believe everything you find on YouTube. Not everything you find is true. Amen? And here's where I want to get. Nona Freeman was a missionary to the continent of Africa. I don't know if you ever heard of her. Okay? She, she, she lived a few years ago, so she's not here. But she said, you need to pray that God will give you love for His Word. Sometimes people that work with the Word in Sunday school and so forth, they will learn just what they've got to teach from. But you better ask God to give you a love, a deep love of His Word. Because when you love the Word of God, you will never get tired to study. You will never get tired to learn more about it. Amen? What did we say at the beginning? A teacher that you like is a passionate teacher. Are you passionate about the subjects you are teaching? And I'm not saying about the handout, I'm talking about the Word of God. How much passion do you have for it? How much willing do you have, uh, willingness do you have to dig, to dig deep into it? I mean, to explain it. That when they ask me, oh, why, oh, uh, why is the Bible mentioning this place? Oh yeah, I know, I read it. It's because da 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 da. Oh, what does this passage mean? Oh, I read it. Look, look, it means this. I can, I can explain it to you with simpler words. Amen. We must get rid of the thought that we are just a teacher. You are the teacher. That God has called you to do this ministry. Oh yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the te lesson you teach is not just a lesson. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know when God is coming back. You don't know what's going to happen to your students. It may be the last time you see them. That's right. So your lesson is not just a lesson, it's the lesson. Every time you see your student, it's the time that God has given you the lesson. God. To make Hallelujah. In your life. Amen? And I want to finish with this. This is a, a, the oldest tree that you will find in the UK. This tree is 5,000 years old. Wow. This tree was there even before Jesus was born. It's 5,000 years. And there is something particular about these trees. You see, they have big branches. And when the branches become heavy, the branches start going down, 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 down. They go on the floor, or the ground, sorry, they go on the ground. And when the branches touch the ground, they become new trunks. And that's why you see there are so many. There's not just one, one trunk. There are so many trunks. And this is what makes me think of what a teacher does. You are a tree, you have so many students, and your job is to give them all the knowledge, all the love, all this uh, channel, all this transforming power of the Word of God, that the branches are going to start being heavy because they're growing. And there's so much and they grow and they grow and they grow and they become trunks on their own and then they yes. can have branches on their own. Amen? Hallelujah. This is what we are here for. We are not here for our glory, we are not here to be the, the teacher, but we are here so that the students can become what God has called them to be. And if we want to do that, we need to do it the best way we can. That's right. Because this way your students will come to you and say, thank you. And when one day we meet our Lord and Savior, He will say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Maybe it's not planned like this, but the Word of God is alive and true and 
powerful change in the world. But we need to be willing to make our part. Amen? We not have the best conditions to do that. We don't have an office where we can go and, and spend seven hours a day meditating on the Word of God. But God gave us a brain, gave us eyes, gave us a heart. And most of all, He gave us His Holy Spirit. So we need to be sensitive to what the Lord is teaching us and speaking to us. Amen? There are so many things that we can say, so many strategies, so many games, so many activities that I would love to share with you. Okay, but first, everything has to start with our willingness to say, Here I am, God. This is everything I have. This is all the hours I have in my day. This is everything that I can give to you. Use it for your glory, for the advancement of your kingdom. Amen. And so let's bow our head, let's raise our hands, let's close our eyes, and let's dedicate yourself to the Lord one more time. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day, oh God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the sisters and brothers that came to your house today, that accepted this call of teaching, oh God, that accepted to work in this ministry, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the wonderful work you're doing in our lives. I thank you for the wonderful things that we have experienced, oh God, in our work with you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit, which is guiding us every day, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, at this moment, Lord Jesus, that our hearts will be sensitive to your teachings, Lord God. That a burden of love will come in our hearts. That a burden and a passion for your word, God, will grow in us, Lord Jesus. As we teach every Sunday, as we teach every week, Lord God, as we gather with our students, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that a spirit of love and of boldness will come upon every teacher of this church, Lord God. Allow us, Lord God, to make a difference when we speak. Allow us, Lord God, to speak what you have for your people. Yes, Lord Jesus, help us to plan. Help us, Lord God, to be the best teachers we can. Help us, Lord God, to have a passion for your word, a passion for your way we teach, Lord Jesus. But most of all, Lord God, let you be speaking in our lives.
Mayapa sa puno na may sanga At sa lilim nito'y bahay ay ginawa niya Sinubukan kong lapitan ang bahay niyang maranya Sinira ko pinasna hanggang ito'y iniwan niya At nang kanyang malaman, paligid ay tahimik na Bahay niya'y nilapitan, itinayo sa dating anyo Sa tulong